So, first things first, you can probably tell that the patio is a little bit cleaner than it used to be before Christmas and managed to get tidied up, pressure washed the patio, uh, then re-graveled around the outside. Uh, it used to look like this, so as you can tell there's a little bit of an improvement there. And if you'd like to check out that video, there's a link in the description. I have still got quite a bit of the jointing or the pointing between the patio slabs to do. I did make a start on that but it rained quite a lot and caused quite a bit of damage before the sand and cement had already set. So I still need to finish that off. But all in all I feel like I'm making quite a bit of progress and hopefully I'll have all of this done before spring starts and I'm going to be really busy in everybody else's garden. Although please don't take that as a complaint, I absolutely love my job and I am really really lucky. And I get to spend so much time in so many gardens all across the county. So the first job today is to tidy up all of these kids toys. There used to be a children's playhouse on these patio slabs. For some reason the kids just never used it um, and because of that we started using it and it was a bit like a shed. It's where we'd be putting our sun loungers, garden tools and any other random objects we could put in there. So that's now gone for another family to enjoy. And here's a little picture from a brighter day last year. But on the brighter note I now have a perfectly flat area for all of my pots to go. So during this video I'm going to try and give a few little tips that you might find useful for a spring cutback. I've always found just giving my secateurs or my pruners a little sharpen before I get started. Although it's always a good idea to have them really sharp, it is really really helpful in spring when you're going to be cutting into some softer growth and some leafy growth like uh, gladiolis and things like that. Now that's all tidied up, I can actually get to the border of this garden now. During the video you are going to see me perched on top of these sleepers quite a lot. The reason for this is on the grass side of this border I planted lots and lots of spring bulbs last year. Uh, we have crocus, snowdrops, bluebells, dwarf daffodils and they're just starting to come through so I'm going to have to be really really careful that I don't squish any of them. Uh, I probably could have planned this one a little bit better. Surprisingly the weeds aren't too bad in this garden, next to this small dock we've got a yellow sorrel, also called oxalis, clover, shamrock, it's just one of many types of clover. This one is called yellow sorrel because of the yellow flowers it will have and not the purple and green leaves it currently has. And those yellow flowers will eventually form a really small like bean pod of seeds that when you try and weed it out will explode either going in your eyes or from up to four meters away from where you're sitting. And speaking of where I'm sitting, next to me you'll see my little log pile. That's for wildlife, a little safe haven if you like. I really don't care what lives there, slugs, snails, earwigs, woodlouse frogs, hopefully all of the above. There's a tiny little hellebore seedling just popping up at the side of its mum. So tip number two, when you are weeding and clearing just go slow because you never know when you're going to bump into a free plant. So there's not much happening in this part of the border at the moment. I'm just clearing lots of the dahlia and gladioli growth from last year. But now I'm down here, I'm reminded of all the plants I managed to actually get thrown in because I've only really had this garden for two years. And the only things here when we moved in were really a few trees and quite a few shrubs and that was it. But one of the early movers we have in the garden is the ajuga or bugle weed, featured quite heavily in my last video. This is spreading nicely with the purple leaves and also some spring flowering bulbs and the geronicum or leopard's bane, which I expect is probably going to flower in the early summer, if not late spring. But every year it seems to be getting harder and harder to predict exactly when that's going to happen. This little white tag you can see flapping around in front of me actually belongs to an apple tree that I planted last year. The tree directly behind me, which is a lot larger, is a pear tree that was already here. It's a fantastic pear tree and a really, really heavy cropper. 
So I thought I'd carry on and get a few more fruit trees in, always really useful. Especially when you have three children that seem to eat their entire body weight in fruit every day. Although I draw the line at allowing brambles or blackberries to grow in my garden, so this one is coming out. And here we have an aquilegia. All I'm going to do with this is gently remove last year's dead growth and then leave it be. I'm not sure how this dandelion managed to escape my weeding last year. It must have been growing in amongst everything else, but it's got to come out. So I'm not saying I have a bramble problem in this garden, but there certainly are a few popping up. I'm not sure where they keep coming from. I'm guessing they're wrapped around this hawthorn tree's roots. All I can really do is keep pulling it out when I see it and eventually it should disappear. So down here I've spotted a thistle, it seems to be well bedded in amongst this Achillea. I'm going to have to take this out, I'm going to be careful though because these are quite spiky and these can go straight through my gloves. So all along this back wall I have lots of verbena, it doesn't look very handsome at the moment but I'm just going to cut this down to the ground, it's herbaceous perennial so it will come back. And one really cool thing I always find with verbena, other than the fact that it's really loved by lots of different pollinators, is the fact that it grows so tall and gangly and never really seems to blow over, well at least not in this garden. And now I'm going to reiterate tip number two, which is being careful when you are weeding. Here we have a creeping buttercup and next to it a really nice healthy little hollyhock which almost got ripped out. Just a little bit more on hollyhocks, if you do see these smaller seedlings in your garden, leave them because the hollyhocks are quite a short lived perennial, so they will need stock to actually replace them when they fail. So as I say it's February at the moment but I have already actually seen quite a few ladybirds and they all seem to be active and no longer overwintering, it's a little bit earlier than usual, hopefully they'll be able to find some food. So this tree is actually a hawthorn, it's a bit of a strange find in a domestic garden, possibly self-set but it was here when we moved in and I've not had the heart to take it out as yet. Uh, as long as I keep this clipped back and keep all of the wood really new and fresh, we shouldn't have any problems with thorns landing in the garden and then ending up in children's feet, or mine. So on to tip number three, always, and I mean always, make yourself a cuppa when you're working. This evergreen shrub here, I'm going to give it a little bit of a light pruning just to reduce its body. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what it is, so if you could help out in the comments I'd appreciate it. It was actually pruned really really hard back to a stump. The plan was to take it out uh, and then I noticed uh, a sucker appear from the base and it looked healthy uh, and once again didn't have the heart to take it out. It might very well be a choice here or mock orange, I don't know so if you can help please do.
So here you can see another little white tag waving around. This one is actually attached to a plum tree. This also got planted last year and also seems to have fared quite well. Plenty of buds on it. So hopefully we'll get a nice crop of plums within a year or two. One particular weed I seem to get quite a lot of in this garden is Herb Robert. Fortunately it's a really easy one to remove and also I'm getting this one before any of the flowers and thus the seed pods can appear which is just one of the little benefits of having a weed around this time of year. This little stump in front of me was actually a conifer, it started to make a little bit of a recovery but has since failed so unfortunately that's going to have to come out uh, and that will go on the log pile. So in this area it starts to get a little bit busier in summer and late spring besides the plum tree we have delphiniums, peony roses, foxgloves, bearded iris and the tree in the far corner you can see is a rowan tree or a mountain ash and last year it had hundreds of orange berries on it that suddenly disappeared with one massive murmuration of starlings who managed to strip it completely bare in about four or five minutes and then move on I hope it happens again this year So here in this corner in amongst another big pile of Achillea I've actually found some irises growing in the centre so I'm going to have to thin this out because I really want to keep these irises. Uh, these aren't something that I planted, they were originally in the garden. Um, they're going to need a little bit of TLC. Now I've managed to clear away enough of the Achillea I can actually see the rhizomes of these irises. So these are actually planted really deep. All of this solid mass you can see just below the surface are the rhizomes and they really need to be on the surface uh, so they can get baked in the sun and it just helps the plant stay healthy and flower a lot better. So I'm going to quickly get these dug up, clean off as much of the soil as I can and replant them and then probably use a watering can just to rinse off the rest of the soil and then hopefully these rhizomes will see a lot more sunlight this year. And here we've got another little find that I did not know was in the garden. It looks like a box leaf honeysuckle or a privet honeysuckle. This is something that's used quite commonly to replace box hedging as it doesn't suffer from the same things like box blight. Uh, not sure what I'm going to do with it, so I'm going to dig a hole in this corner, get it planted and watered in, and then I will decide later on. Which in Martin the Garden Guy language probably means this is where it's going to stay. One of the biggest issues I had when I first moved into this house a few years ago was this weed suppressant. This had been applied all over every surface and then it had been regularly mulched with bark chippings, never actually replacing the bark chippings from the previous year. So eventually they ended up with about four to five inches of actual topsoil above the weed suppressant. Uh, which kind of defeats the entire object of using a weed suppressant in the first place. Tip number four, don't do that. So I was just rootling around down here pruning this gigantic hollyhock and then I bumped into an old friend of mine, Sticky Willy, or Cleavers, or lots of other things from all around the world from what I have found out from my last video. You're coming out. So as I move along the final stretch along this back border you can see a small patio apple tree that got put in only a few weeks ago. Hopefully it's going to do better in the border than it did in the pot. 
all down this border you can see a Juga, you can see a Dianthus here all I'm going to do to this is just clip back as much of the dead growth as last year uh, next to it is a Lavender, we're going to do the same and then another Verbena along the back it's all a little bit crammed in here so I'm going to try and thin some of these out a bit potentially move some of them later on in the year Just next to this lavender here, I can see a honeysuckle. I really haven't got a clue where this has come from either. Again, I'm guessing it's from the old garden uh, where the root has survived and suddenly started to grow again. Probably going to dig that up and try and get it climbing next to a trellis of some kind. Well, I've found something else growing next to this lavender now, and it's a little delphinium. Um, I'm going to leave that there and see what happens. Hopefully it'll be happy. As I move almost to the end of this border, you can see all of these gladioli from last year. It was an amazing flower display, so I'm going to mark these so I can actually get them supported a little bit more next year to stop the wind from blowing them over. I have to keep reminding myself about all the bulbs in this grass. I have already crunched a few snowdrops and crocus, unfortunately, so I'm going to have to be a little bit more careful. Which is a real shame because in another week or two there would have been a lot more noticeable. Right, I've almost reached the end of this marathon two hour long weeding session and cutback session ready for spring. I think that's about it. I've almost got towards the cherry tree in my herb garden there. Final job for today is to get these tools cleaned up a little bit. Also pick up a few of these bird feeders and get those disinfected. I like to do this kind of regular uh, just to cut down on any parasites, bacteria or viruses that can pass in between the bird populations. There we are. Now some of the jobs I will be doing in the next video. I will be planting up these hanging baskets. Sowing some vegetable and flower seeds. Laying some patio slabs all the way down this section towards the greenhouse. Planting up the raised beds with vegetables. And finally, sorting out my really messy herb garden. But that's all for now. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe if you can. I'm Martin the Garden Guy and I hope you have a really great day. Thanks again.